Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com with a good example of how academic climate science is done. Twitter was featuring this article today from the Weather Channel India. Analysis of ice core samples from Antarctica's James Ross Island revealed substantial levels of black carbon, seemingly deposited there in the 1300s, way before industrialization. Analysis of the samples conducted to determine the origin of this black carbon showed a significant increase in its levels from around the year 1300. The levels tripled over the next 700 years and peaked during the 16th to 17th centuries. I didn't realize the 17th century was 700 years after the 14th century, but I appreciate the Weather Channel showing off their mathematics skills. By running atmospheric simulations of black carbon transport and deposition in the southern hemisphere, researchers narrowed down three potential black soot sources, Patagonia, Tasmania, and New Zealand. Paleofire records confirmed New Zealand as the origin. The charcoal records hinted at a rise in fire activity around the year 1300, which was also the projected date of the Maori people's arrival, settlement, and subsequent burning of most of the forested areas in New Zealand! Exclamation mark. The results were surprising given the 7,000 kilometer distance between New Zealand and James Ross Island. Nevertheless, the study provides evidence that emissions from human-related burning have impacted Earth's atmosphere and climate far earlier and at scales far larger than previously thought. But they didn't provide any evidence that the Maoris had impacted the Earth's climate. The only actual evidence they had was some black soot in Antarctica. They ran some computer models based on the nonsensical idea that they could model wind patterns from hundreds of years ago over a 7,000 kilometer distance. They threw out some buzzwords like carbon and man-made climate change which were intended to trigger a reaction. And they included a picture of what are probably some tires burning on top of a hill and making lots of smoke. This picture has nothing to do with Maori's burning forests or anything actually related to the topic under discussion. They say that the levels of the black carbon peaked around the 16th or 17th centuries, which were right in the middle of the Little Ice Age. So even if their theory was true about where the soot came from, they certainly didn't cause any global warming. This document from the National Interagency Fire Center website in the United States was recently deleted by the Biden administration, but it has some very interesting information about forest fires during the Little Ice Age. Historically, fire has been a frequent and major ecological factor in North America. In the conterminous United States during the pre-industrial period from 1500 to 1800, an average of 145 million acres burned annually. Today, only 14 million acres are burned annually by wildland fire from all ignition sources. So during the Little Ice Age, at pre-industrial levels of CO2, there was 10 times as much burn acreage in the United States as there is now. It's pretty likely that the same patterns of burn acreage were occurring in the Southern Hemisphere as in the Northern Hemisphere. The people who wrote this article didn't provide any evidence of climate change and only very thin evidence that the black carbon was caused by human-made fires. What they did was they reached a conclusion first. They decided they wanted to blame the black soot they found on humans. Then they worked backwards and came up with a wild arm-waving theory that the soot was there because of fires started by the Maoris. And then without any evidence they threw in the concept of climate change. And this is how climate science is generally done. They come up with a conclusion blaming something they see on humans, and then they use the tiniest little bit of historical evidence to come up with an ad hoc theory in support of their conclusion. Let's look at some of the language they used. The results were surprising. Nevertheless, the study provides evidence. In other words, they probably don't even believe their own results, but are willing to just blow it off and move forward anyway. They also use the term, the projected date of the Maori people's arrival. So once again, they're speculating. And their theory was largely based on atmospheric simulations from hundreds of years ago over a 7,000 kilometer distance. What these people are doing has nothing to do with actual science. They're simply generating propaganda, blaming something from the past on humans. And there's nothing new about this. Mark Twain wrote, there's something fascinating about science. One gets such wholesale returns of conjecture out of such a trifling investment of fact. 
Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this junk science for the past 13 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.